Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Ah. Happy, happy trading, everyone, and thank you so much for the invite. I love that I'm following Anka. She is actually um, the gracious soul who it, it introduced me to you and Rob. So thank you very much, Marissa, for the invite. Rob, for having me at Wealth 365, and Anka for the introduction. Love her. <laughs> um, can you see my screen all right? Uh, yes, we can. All right, super. My name is Samantha LaDuc. I am founder of LaDucTrading.com and CIO of LaDuc Capital, LLC. I am going to come at uh, this a little bit different. I am a solid generalist. I am not navigating on any particular time frame. I actually um, address multiple time frames, chase, swing, and trend duration trades for my clients. I also uh, cover every asset class. I'm really, really excited about uh, solving the mysteries of the market and finding the edge. And I believe firmly that the edge keeps moving. So I use a macro backdrop. Um, I use, of course, technical analysis for every trade setup because I believe, obviously, uh, price action you know, rules as it relates to knowing when to enter and exit. Um, a trade safely, profitably, but I'm using a lot of other modalities. Again, this whole macro to micro theme um, is encompassing macro and intermarket and technical and sentiment and quant and fundamental. So I'm, I'm a little curious, I guess you could say. So I'm going to uh, show you a little bit about how I approach the markets. Um, because I like to connect the data and this narrative, if you will, of creating a story to find not only what's moving, um, you know, how to trade it, but I want to know why it's moving. And then that can create some really durable themes. And the focus for, you know, today is for those who are interested in trend trading, not necessarily sitting in my live trading room, which I do, by the way, offer a live trading room every morning from 9 to 12. Um, and that includes a client workspace in Slack where I'm very active posting my analysis. So market thoughts um, throughout the day, as well as my trade setups, annotated charts in my chase, swing, and trend channels. I do a lot of my um, macro analysis for those wonks that really get into it and they are interested because they are involved in institutional boutiques um, or hedge funds or high net worth individuals. And then there are the retail traders that are just, you know, they got, the, they got that, that itch. They love to chase. So like I said, I, I use that, um, that momentum trading in my live trading room um, and as well as populating my analysis uh, and intermarket uh, flow, if you will, of what's happening in the market that shows divergences and better timing inflection points. So that's my thing. I really come out of, come at the market from a wide um, spectrum of keeping an open mind, keeping very, very flexible. And it allows me to find some really great um, sector rotation and volatility that then turn into market timing calls. And uh, one uh, client of mine was friends with Howard and said, hey, Samantha really did a fabulous job of guiding us through the February, March uh, COVID crash. And I was extremely in the zone for that. So I literally uh, was excited because I saw the divergence happening for about a month. And it's easier to time a top, honestly, because there is a divergence typically that shows up. So I was invited by Howard, which was very nice to kind of talk about um, what I saw and when I covered, uh, in other words, this was a really big, huge, important theme, and I was really convicted also with my indicators, and I'll talk to, talk to you a little bit about that. But it comes because I am in front of the markets all day long. I love to analyze. I mean, I, that's my thing. <laughs> and I educate through my analysis. And again, this is very much focused on client engagement depending on their uh, time frame, um, their experience. I personally am an options on equities kind of trader. Um, Anka does you know, futures, for example. Some are only stock uh, focused, but doesn't matter. I address a trade setup on all of those vehicles. So this is my education live and in Slack and in trade alerts and also in my posts. But this particular um, Linzani podcast was back in August. And it's kind of cool because it does showcase this macro to micro analysis for active traders and investors 
but it also really, really was an interesting timing um, call live in this podcast on August 6th, where everyone was extremely uber bullish gold and precious metals. And I said, yeah, no, I think it's done. And I made that call and then I doubled down and I doubled down again. <laughs> and only recently after a solid 15 to 20% pullback in bonds and gold, have we obviously had a nice bounce um, since that August top. But I'm not afraid to make market timing calls is my point. So I'm known for that. I'm known for uh, being nimble, but I'm also known for volatility and this sector rotation theme that we're gonna get into because I kind of seem to highlight on sector rotation um, as a, a way to kind of play the growth or the value theme, et cetera. So this was something very nice. Um, I've been on his show a few times and this outreach that I'm really trying to get uh, also women um, involved more in trading and investing, uh, that has been obviously one big, uh, you know, hobby passion of mine to elevate the uh, trading and investing world to attract, inspire, and support more women in trading and investing. So I want to really emphasize that. Um, Anka and I have talked about that as well um, as it relates to getting uh, education to those who are new to trading and interestingly enough in the last year more women have applied for trading accounts than men um there's a lot of reasons for that there's a big she session in play but it's been very uh, it's been very exciting to not only support women in trading but um i run an every other week women in trading and finance webinar um, it's my macro to micro power hour. I do one on Tuesday, one on Thursday. So it's been, it's been really nice to kind of see this uh, broaden. Let's put it that way. Anyway, the point is of this particular talk, I think is just for me, we're of course risk managers. Who, whatever time frame we choose, we are very much focused on entering trade and that's fine, but it's actually the exit that matters. So risk management is a superpower and I like to find out, um, obviously, what's uh, you know moving a particular asset stock, if you will, and then basket trade around it. I'm excited about coming up with you know sectors that are going to be durable for you know several weeks, potentially several months, versus just you know a 15 minute chart. So I will tell you that I can do that in my trading room on a short duration, but this is much more focused on uh, finding durable themes especially for those who cannot be in my live trading room. So I mentioned, you know, my, my kind of focus on risk management is it isn't that I'm set up one way or the other bullish or bearish, but I'm always lawyering a trade, trying to find out what side of the trade is at risk. And I use technical, you know, as well as a few other things, but that's really my focus is to be able to support clients in a trade and then knowing when to stay long, or start tighten up those stops and start really being careful to volatility entering in. And then of course, knowing when to short and when to press short. And we haven't had a lot of opportunities <laughs> in, uh, in short duration trades. Um, so, but we will, there's no question. And I'm gonna show you some pretty compelling charts at the end um, that will give you a little bit of perspective of what I'm seeing at for risk. We're bullish until we confirm otherwise, but I definitely have some intermarket analysis that I think you don't wanna to miss toward the end. All right, so Mark Chandler is um, uh, just a fabulous uh, supporter also since I use currencies as a backdrop, not just bonds, currencies, um, for sure, kind of make the world go, go round. And he has seen that even though I do not come from fixed income or currency, uh, you know, markets like he is obviously very involved as a chief market strategist, um, I'm able to connect the dots. So I like to see a story forming that kind of like scanning and synthesizing so I can try and also, um, you know, correlate, for example, the dollar and gold, um, that kind of thing. And then inflation expectations with commodities, et cetera. So I'm very much into that um, macro backdrop that I then parlay into kind of an operational or how he puts it, I, I, I access this institutional knowledge, but then for retail, I'm able to operationalize that info and then create a trade alert for retail. So that's kind of my thing. I'm not talking down to anybody. I try to explain, you know, what's the SLR and what's going on with, 
you know, the Treasury general accounts and you know, what's going on reverse repo because I want to understand it myself, but it doesn't necessarily translate to many um, active traders. So I do a little bit of that as well for those who are interested or who are managing money. All right, so I do run this trader education service for retail and institution. I use um, also some uh, very cool, and we'll get to, to it at the end, not only my custom indicators, but I also created algos for automated trade-in signals, and they're actually going live on the um, Apple Store April 27th. So this is an exciting time for me. I have literally taken my pattern recognition and parlayed it into, not me, but I <laughs> had the code, the math, if you will, create these trading signal alerts, again, across all different uh, time frames for um, all the ETFs out there. It's very exciting. So we'll get to that at the end as well. Um, just to kind of recap, I do this uh, focus on chase, swing, and trend, um, the backdrop, sector rotation, market timing, which means volatility. That's what I'm known for. And here are some of the market timing calls that if you follow me on Twitter, you already know this, but I also post a lot. So I've done articles. Um, I had, was on stock charts TV for their 2021 uh, predictions for this year. It's, you know, I, I'm out there with predictions of where I think we're going to be rotating. And this is my thing. I, I'm excited about then testing it, testing it every single day to see how I'm doing. So this particular, and we'll, I'll also show you a chart in January, uh, 2018 uh, saw a very large divergence that was about to trigger and it dropped 10% in two weeks. Then again, in October of 2018 was very, very specific about the 10 year being at 3.2% and it was going to cause emerging market panic. And we can, we next day actually rolled over and then continued down to the Christmas Eve massacre of, of 1223 when Munchen came in and, you know, made the call to the banks. So that was a 20% drawdown. And then the most recent 35% drawdown in the COVID February 18th, I made the call. And then we had the Friday to Monday, 24th of February um, drop and we just kept on going. So those three, I am on record for making in advance very firmly, I am seeing that type of divergence set up again. So we've had an impossible time of really having any durable short, and I've got tons of longs in the safety trades, they've been great, but at some point, all things being equal, they will fall. So I'm, I'm on it. Right now I'm really, really trying to get my you know, my uh, timing, if you will, in tune. But when I see it, I will definitely call it. Clients, of course, have it first. And that uh, that's across bonds, gold, uh, value rotation from growth to value, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm very excited about um, some big inflection points coming up. And this is one of them that has been working extremely well. So I have been very focused on sector rotation. And a while back, um, I'm going to kind of go way back here, April of 2020. So this was after the bottom had already been, you know, put in again, March 23rd, Fed intervention, boom, we got tons of trillions coming into the market to backstop um, this equity, you know, route. And it was everything. The, the dollar screamed higher, you know, gold collapsed um, with bonds. No, there was no hedge. Volatility took off like hot fire flames. So my intermarket chart attack, you can see down here, kind of starting from the bottom, this is what I posted to clients. So I'm writing this stuff up, right? I'm writing this theme. Here's my narrative. Here are the charts. Here's what I see going on. And then in the in the um, in every single day, identifying the highest probability trades, obviously in that particular theme. So rotation into value setup. It started May 26th. Violent rotation. We started to have a really nice, strong move. May 30th. I did an interview. The case for value over momentum. June 1st, value takes flight. And then June 8th was a historic momentum factor rotation into value. So what does that mean? We had an 8.8 .8 standard deviation move from momentum into, I call it anti-momentum, growth to value. In other words, tech, 
then just goes into stuff that isn't tech, <laughs> oversold uh, commodities, cyclicals, um, energy, that kind of stuff, right? So being able to spy that, especially since many, many, many hold tech dear to their hearts, they're either rabid fans or it's just performed so well over the years, but it is a bond proxy trade. A lot of tech traders don't realize that they're actually trading duration. In other words, it is really very much a low interest um, regime. Until recently, we have the threat of higher interest rate regime, but the point is they don't really understand that this is um, what hedge funds do. They short value, right? And then all of a sudden value pops up and they're in pain. They have to sell their growth. So I follow that type of, uh, uh, of, of rotation because it's very profitable to do so. And then after this momentum rotation, you can also, um, by the way, trade bonds, um, as well as short tech, long value. There are lots of ways to express that trade. Then we obviously had a big snap down in value and pop in tech, and that was my July 14th call, value is wicked oversold. August 11, rotation into value is underway again. <laughs> and October, obviously before the uh, November election, I had my theme with my charts, the Biden bid meets value rotation. We're on again. And then between October and January, there were too many to post because we had at that point um, the Pfizer vaccine on uh, November 9th. Everybody knows, you know, that we gapped up pretty much across the board, whether it be financials or, you know, airlines, um, even REITs, real estate investment trusts, you know, came up from the dead, so rose from the dead. So the whole migration, if you will, into reopening themes, vaccine rainbow, um, not just the Biden election, but then the blue wave. So the Democratic sweep, if you will, in Georgia, that was very momentum, um, very supportive of stimulus and stimulus getting into the hands of consumers to buy, buy, buy. So these themes and, and also first of the year, I'm really, you know, looking at commodities as not just um, time to rise up after multi-decade lows, but also it's a theme where hedge funds need to hedge. And there really aren't a lot, right? Gold was not forming any type of hedge uh, protection since it had been falling since August of 2020. Uh, bonds had been falling since August 2020. Uh, volatility was really, on occasion, it was you know, eruptive, but then it would get sold short again and squashed right back down. So it really wasn't a great hedge. And there are times when volatility does not serve as a hedge. And I proved that in August when we had a sharp pullback in, in NASDAQ, 14%, and volatility had run up with NASDAQ. And I said, it's not a hedge. Use puts, use put spreads on the tech. Don't use VIX. You're, it's not going to pay. And sure enough, volatility fell with the NASDAQ back in August of 2020. So th that's my observation of knowing what is a hedge because institutions need to, period. We all do, actually, at times. <laughs> so the focus was uh, commodities are still serving as a hedge, plus we have inflation expectations, plus we have the vaccine rainbow, plus we have the reopening theme, plus we have tons of stimulus, and it doesn't seem to be ending anytime soon. So. My um, stock charts prediction um, was, you know, small caps over medium um, and medium over large. And if you look at, you know, uh, energy, we had zero performance last year and we've had outsized performance the first quarter of 2021. So it's taken a pause right now, which was something else that I also expected, a flattening of the yield curve. Energy needs to digest. It ran up way too fast but it's still being used as a hedge. And I don't just mean oil, but lumber, palladium, platinum, uh, agriculture, and countries hoard that stuff, copper, oil, grains. So there's already gonna be a natural bid. Add on top of that inflation expectations, which have never advanced so quickly, like ever. And then you have a multi-decade low in commodities. It's just ripe for the picking to trade commodities. So I wanna show you a little bit of what I mean by that. Um, I, yeah, I already told about August 2020, golden bond short thesis. Um, this was August 3rd. There still wasn't any, you know, I said, going, I'm, I'm bearish US dollar and bullish the market, but 
here we were in November. There was just still no impetus. It just looked like silver is still due a rest. I, met, I went on Stock Charts TV again and said, nope, I still think this is going to go down. And until mo and then most recently, obviously, bonds and gold have bounced together after bonds had fallen 20%, though. So that was a very good uh, swing or trend trade, depending on, you know, again, your time frame. So I'm using this backdrop, if you will, to stay with a particular trend until it changes, until, you know, real rates rise or, you know, the dollar really falls out of bed. Um, this is my, you know, bet basically back in August that we were going to have an inflation bet with commodities, very, very strong uh, impulse. And I did up a whole lumber piece that not only was lumber going to be extremely volatile, but it also would be a really great trend trade to pick RFP, which was a particular um, publicly traded stock. And there weren't a lot of great uh, lumber plays. I mean, Home Depot did awesome. That was also part of home building and um, home improvement theme. But my point is I'm writing this stuff up, posting this for clients who want to do more swing and trend trading. And I'll show you that in just a minute, but that's what I'm trying to figure out where I have that. Here it is. Okay, so for example, this was the post that I gave to clients. Okay, August 25th, lumber and RFP. I had already been long, had recommended long lumber, for example. And I'm like, protect lumber and or short, because we're getting into a place where I think, you know, it was 800 at the time, bearish engulfing. I've got my technical reasons too. I go through and I talk about, you know, timing a lumber pullback, the reasons why lumber is still going to get bid, uh, the tariffs that uh, Trump had elected put some of the mills out of business, the fact that we have inelasticity of supply because of the beetle infestation in British Columbia, um, the futures curve. There's all kinds of stuff that goes into that. But the point is, the, uh, the thesis was, all right, we're going to have some pullback in this theme, but then I think it picks up, I'm not... Um, I'm not bearish long-term lumber. And because of that, I'm looking at plays that would be really, really viable for trends. Because again, we have this whole demand inelasticity meets supply inelasticity. How does that translate into themes, actionable trading themes? And the one that I really, really liked was a stock by the name of RFP. So I do my write-up, right? I'm, I'm given all this you know, narrative, if you will, uh, to support my lumber call, my stock pick for RFP, and then you get this kind of, hold on one second, you get this kind of performance. That's lumber. So over the years, multi-decade lows, right, and then hot fire flames, uh, this is just yesterday. And I still think this can go higher, but it's now extremely volatile. And that RFP that I talked about, on a weekly, you can see it, it's a little messy here, but I'll just do this. Um, this was actually right back here. This is the August timeframe recommending it. And it did a beautiful job of just breaking out sideways, breaking out sideways, got extended, came back down. That's a 10 week, by the way. And then just two days ago, I said, careful, so RFP from my, you know, four and a half bucks to 16, 17, but really this is the level. If we can get and stay above it, oh my, but I think this is going to be, this is extended. Here's the 10 week, which is the mean. So now expect some volatility. So this is on a weekly because trends in my opinion are more you know, trendy and they need more time to work out and <laughs> you got to kind of be a little bit more patient with them. But that is how um, I looked at commodities in particular and, you know, wrote this thesis and I do the same thing for, um, again, reopening plays or commodity plays, uh, oil. This was a freak of nature situation in oil. I, and I am very, very, um, you know, <laughs> excited that I have, uh, you know, oil trading friends that I can hang out with that only do oil. Like that's the only thing they trade. So I can learn from their fundamental. Then I can actually look at my, you know, read on this situation. And it was fascinating. I mean, one example of this was when oil, after it had dropped 
um, into negative territory, and it was obviously an outlier waiting to revert with velocity. Literally, we're in the room. It's, it's live in my trading room, closed captioning, you know, the whole thing. And we were positioned for long oil and gas plays, um, very strong option flow, which by the way, I'm an, um, I'm an options trader primarily, uh, like 80-20, 20% common and, and 80% options, and caught that literally um, because we were already positioned for it. So being, a co I'm not a commodity trader, I don't trade the underlying, I love XLE and XOM and you know the CPE and I'm really into that, but I'm just saying being in the mindset where you expecting a particular direction, being positioned for it, and then it moves is very satisfying. So this is um, a little bit of how I work. I'm looking for volatility to enter an instrument. I'm not afraid of volatility. And it's not just because I raised three teenagers. I am very much one who wants momentum and I wanna be positioned for it, long or short. I am very much uh, looking at volatility as a, uh, a magnifier, if you will, right? It's, it's very much a time where a lot of people want to stay away from volatility. I want to see it enter an instrument so I can ride that wave. Really, it's surfing and you want a big wave. So I like this. I like timing volatility also as it relates to advising clients when it's time to put on um, a hedge. The market's getting a little you know, extended, uh, volatility is coiled, let's do this. So I was very fortunate. Also, I had just given a webinar in my Macro to Micro Power Hour and said we were gonna have a huge volatility spike. So I have a stock bond volatility ratio that has helped me kind of guide clients when we're gonna have volatility. Wouldn't you know the puppy went 62% higher. It was the third largest one day increase in history going back to 1990. And I had literally just warned one week prior. So that's important, right? Because a lot of people are like, hey, what the heck just happened? Um, I like to time volatility and sector rotation and themes that go along with market timing calls. And this is, um, uh, again, my, 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 my game. This is, <laughs> and, and restriction isn't my game, so I tend to kind of look everywhere for where it possibly could enter. So this was definitely um, what I wanted to kind of show that it doesn't have to just be one specialty, whether you're fundamental or, you know, really you're quant driven. Um, macro is your backdrop, big picture, trying to figure out what central banks are going to do. I, to me, I just piece a lot of that stuff and put together that puzzle and, and look for the edge. And I believe the edge just keeps moving. So I try to stay flexible. So one of the ways, though, is obviously, you know, manifesting these, uh, this analysis into the form of trade alerts and capturing a trade setup. So for me, this is using all of those particular vehicles to still be a very effective you know, risk manager of trade setups. So technical analysis is definitely required. It's a core strength. Intermarket analysis is more of that. Um, it's kind of a tool in the toolbox to kind of see if anything's going to surprise underneath the surface that you can't see. Um, for those who follow me on Twitter, on occasion I will come out and I'll say this is a sold to you market and they know what that means. That means that there's selling or distribution underneath the surface, but the market can't see it yet. So I have indicators where I can see that. Um, option tactics or strategies are very much uh, personal. So some people are chasing weeklies, really. It's fun, right? The, the single stock gamma option flow is a game. It had a lot of power during January with the GameStop, um, et cetera. So that's, that's chasing. Swing trading, a little bit more time, you know, pull back a little bit in time, have it, let it have a little bit more, you know, volatility and try and stay in it to win it. Trends are clearly durable investment themes. So capital deployment really one really matters. And I am actually, everyone is different, but I'm like one to 3% of available equity. And this is my time frame. If it's chases, they're usually one to three days. And I use options one to three weeks out. And I use an hourly chart. So that's my chases. I do that in the trading room all day long. 
So that's fun. Um, it's kind of that adrenaline, but it's only about 20% of my book. Swings make up the bulk. They are definitely the ones that I'm expecting a volatility move um, to come in and then carry it for a few weeks. And I'm using options that are one to three months out. Some people sell options, they collect that premium. That's not really my thing. I like financed call spreads. That's about um, the most I will do, mostly because a lot of clients don't have that type of marginality in their accounts, and you need a lot of margin when you do selling strategies and uh, financed call spreads. But I do suggest them, and there are favorites that I have, um, and I've been in, I have videos on my YouTube channel where I talk about that as well. But trends are definitely, um, the thing that I think right now has been, uh, you know, really, really durable themes that I can spy early and I'll show you some of those examples. And in that particular case, I'm using options typically three to six months out. So if there's something that's really in play right now, um, I'm going to look, you know, three to six months out and play some option trades, uh, typically at the money or very, you know, near even a call spread and let that just kind of sit. And I'll show you some examples of that. So GameStop was actually an example of that. No joke. Back in June, I had this as my 4 to 40 stock. Went over it all the time for clients. It was one that obviously caught the world uh, world's attention, but it was my 4 to 40 stock. And I had April $12 calls. And this thing became a monster. And when it got to 60, I remember there was a big famous short caller saying, yeah, it's going to whatever. And I said, no. Um, this obviously is not just a short interest, but now it's it's got rapid rapid speculation and it's just not going away. So in fact, in my um, YouTube channel, which is Ladoop Trading, I'll just show you down here under Trading Insights, I had, before it went crazy, GameStop, my 4 to 40 top stock pick. And then when it went crazy, GameStop has no stops. It was 240 at the point at that time. And it was a Monday night and I was very, very worried that the um, Robin Hood and other brokerage firms, and I say so, were going to limit the trading in GameStop. And I was very, very cautious. I told clients, please, 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 um, you know, be careful. And the next day they stopped trading options. The, ne the next day stopped trading the stock. <laughs> anyway, that play by play is in that video from Monday night um, when, when GameStop was 240. So there is definitely a theme that I have in spying um, bottom fishing plays for sure that are going to be durable trends and that was one of them. So this is an example and I'm obviously very happy that I could make some money for clients. One in particular was, you know, went from retail to millionaire um, and stuck with that trade for months. So it wasn't like we just came in at the tail end. <laughs> so want to make that really clear. All right, but there are tons of other, you know, videos that I have done for free, but I talk all day long about trade setups and custom analysis. This is just kind of what I do, and it's hard to emphasize that there's a lot of uh, plays out there, but very few actually really excite me. So I want first to understand where the market's going to go and why, um, what the risk looks like and then size up the best sector rotation themes that are durable and then go and pick the stocks that I like the most. So I don't want to play in a little, you know, half dozen favorite Momo tech stocks um, and, and it, it's just not my thing. I'm going to be open and lawyer the trade for anything new because I think, like I said, the edge keeps moving. So this was, for example, third quarter last year we're talking, right? So I had a list, of, this is a third quarter review from the second half of 2020, and these did really well. So you can see GameStop was in here too, by the way, GME, 434, and it was only 11 bucks then, <laughs> but I believed it was gonna be $40 by the end of the year. So this is just an example of third quarter review of my second half picks, most did extremely well, then I go on to something else that's new. Here's a Q3 trend list, explosive growth plays. So at that point, momentum was starting to pick up. In other words, really the Bitcoin, um, which I believe is trades like a commodity. 
started taking off with the other commodities. So I treat it like a commodity. It's actually not even considered uh, like a token is a security, um, but Bitcoin, it, it looks and trades just like a commodity. So I had put together an explosive growth potential list. And at the time that I had grabbed this, which was back in March, right, because that quarter is ending, and we're going to go into something new for sure, they had uh, obviously done extremely well. So these were the, um, some of the ARC plays like Invitae and um, definitely MicroStrategy, the biotechs, a lot of software um, apps and security and just exciting. It was really exciting. And then it's over. So the commodity theme was my Q1. I was really excited about commodities. And this is also something in the trend category that I follow up with. Not everyone can trade the underlying, but there are some ETFs for retail. Anyway, palladium and platinum, um, I had first written about in October 2019. This was my palladium's power making a pitch. This was my palladium powers higher. Again, this was April in 2021, okay? And you can kind of see this move is palladium and it's still in play. There's nothing wrong with this. And by the way, this is decades. So this is multi-decade type of analysis. This is platinum, right? It's, it took off beautifully, broke out of this, ch this channel. So whether, like, that's my thing. And I did a, um, a presentation also in December where I talked about higher oil, higher uranium, higher platinum and palladium. It is part of also this electrification um, con catalytic converter. So I've got some fundamental analysis behind it, um, definitely supply demand dynamics behind it. But this is my thing as it relates to finding trends that are durable and then trading uh, when they're high probability, like the lumber, like the RFP pick, which was the stock that I chose. I also gave a Canadian um, pick for this move higher in lumber. Did I expect it would go like this? Absolutely not. <laughs> Do I think this still has um, higher levels to go? Yes, sadly, uh, but it's way too volatile now for most. So this is where I'm at now. Since we've been in digestion mode, I have moved into safety themes. So what does that mean, safety themes? Well, started playing a lot of, where the heck is my chart here? There we go, hold on. All right, so started playing things like advanced, I, I know this is really kind of messy, but these, are the themes, auto, retail, plays, AAP, Orly, GT at lower levels. Um, AMT and SBAC are the duopoly of tower for sell, I mean, we're talking boring here and slow, but absolutely <laughs> profitable. Uh, Big Five and some other retail, LB has been my favorite, um, especially since the CEO, longest running CEO after Berkshire Hathaway, um, moved on. Um, Hog, I have a personal sweet spot and it has broken out it, almost at my price target of 48. Um, I could go, I do have a few uh, IPO laggards that I really like um, that I have been recommending. One just recently is brand new. So there's still longs, by the way. KHC, talk about boring, but it's finally, finally put in a bottom. Uh, CNTY is a casino play that's already doubled. Um, Costco, Target, Home Depot, again, themes of uh, just consumer cyclicals. GNRC, a lot of the plays that are infrastructure related, but this took off very strongly after solid insider buying and a gorgeous chart. DSX was a recent one and it's been digesting the past few weeks, but it's a shipping play. Looks like a great bottom fishing play. Again, FCX and XME, obviously copper, accumulated because of economic growth, but also just, gosh, it's, you need it, it infrastructure. And we have um, the Biden administration pushing that. Uh, aerospace, which is XAR for those that are into it. Uh, GD, uh, LMT, uh, Northrop Grumman, again, names that are not 
Apple, Google, Facebook, Netflix, okay? Because I think that that's, those are chases now. They're not durable themes. They've been going sideways since August of last year, with the exception of Google. That is definitely the strongest of the, uh, the bunch. Um, GM and Ford have been multi-month trends. Uh, IBM, Oracle, and Cisco, old tech over new tech. Did you see IBM today? That's already been in play since 124 in my, in my client um, uh, space. This has just been a fabulous, fabulous theme. So transports, 3M, uh, home building, RFP is kind of part of that because of the lumber. Um, XLP and XLRE, for those who really want the safety trades. Uh, uranium, I've already talked about that. Within uh, oil and gas, XLE and Exxon and CPE, which um, trades like flat oil, so it's a little bit more volatile, but it can be a heck of a lot of fun uh, if you're on the right side of the trade. I still like Twitter and some new ones that I've added, but the safety theme has been very, very profitable the past few months. It kind of combines commodities and value um, and cyclicals. It's been the theme before that, you know, it was, com it has been commodities before that it was explosive growth. You know, before that it was just a smattering of whatever looked good. There's durable themes. That's what I do. I pick out what's working. And then when it stops working, they go out and I have very specific levels where they need to stay within. All right. So some other things that I use that help in this risk management is a superpower kind of framework besides my brain that is constantly trying to figure out where the edge is right where it's moving is i have developed risk indicators for um chase swing and time frame which are basically in a nutshell algos they are underlying algos that create an automated trading signal Folks can either trade directly from that or use it as a tool in their toolbox. Risk range is for the intraday market moves. It works on a 30 minute time frame, and it literally delivers actionable alerts. These are so cool. Wait till I show you. Uh, go with the flow is swing positions. So that actually uh, updates twice a day. It's very much for those who wanna go to the end of the day and look and see um, how the market has behaved really without all the noise Without all the gyrations, it smooths it tremendously. And then portfolio hedger, for those who want to build portfolio value, you need to know when to hedge. You need to know when to avoid risk. So this is what that, uh, the purpose of these three algos that are housed on a VigTech IO uh, website and will be going live on the Apple Store. And they're part of this um, offer that I'm going to be talking about in a minute. So here was an example where it literally looks like a traffic light. You come in and you say, okay, I want to see what it looks like for technology. Like, what does ARC look like? Well, it triggered a very bearish move on March 2nd at 2 o'clock, and it stayed bearish for several weeks. It ended up being a 36% pullback. <laughs> so these are on the intraday levels, and then you can kind of overlay it. This was the cues back in um, March, where we had a, a pullback actually February into March. And you can see literally the time frames of when it triggers, literally March 2nd, two o'clock, and it went from bullish to bearish right then. So this, these are the, out of the automated trading signals that um, I also provide. They kind of have a chart overlay and I'll show you what I mean by that. So for example, on my Twitter account, just yesterday, I posted that. Let me, it's kind of cool. Hold on. There it is. So yesterday, um, the, the choppy intraday price action, right? But my risk end indicators make it smooth. So this was, for example, uh, do I have this whole thing? Let me just show you. Ah, doesn't take the whole picture. All right, so you can kind of see where it turns. Instead of all this choppiness, it smooths out the price action. And it's not based on price, by the way. It's my own secret sauce. It's using volume and volatility and a whole bunch of other things. But it shows when the inflection points are coming up. And this just happens to be the risk range alert. But you can literally overlay the risk signals over the price action of any stock market index or ETF. It is very cool. So that is the 
part of portfolio risk management that I wanted to kind of share because I have not only the um, opportunity to uh, work with clients every day in my live trading room, but I also have the trend alert kind of, uh, sorry, the trend trading mindset for clients that are more interested in uh, durable themes. And that is aided and abetted both by my algo trading alerts. This is the offer that I wanted to make available for those who were gracious enough to give me their time in talking about, learning about my approach to markets and this trend trading mindset for those who just kind of want to set it and forget it, get my best big ideas for trend trading. This is an offer just for Wealth 365. It is very, very much discounted, meaning if you were to go to my price page, you would see this big ideas only comes, only comes in an annual subscription. It's $2,300, right? Very different from my member, regular fishing fleet membership, which is with live trading room and the rest. For Wealth365, and by the way, this is not the price, it would be, if I can find it again, because there I do. Okay, there we go. It is only $8.99 for six months. So you come in, you get the advantage of not only my total attention to client engagement, my total attention to volatility, and we're gonna be having some, my attention to finding the best, the best trading vehicles on a trend time frame. And by the way, that also includes, um, you know, things like Bitcoin. So recently, when the coin IPO went, I said, yeah, that's, that's not good for the bond, for the Bitcoin proxies and actually gave levels short for Riot and Mara and the GBTC and MSTR. But big picture, these are levels for Bitcoin. I know that's very interesting to folks. Um, play, Palladium, Platinum, those are updates. A hog has been a theme of mine since, you know, 37. And it's a beautiful breakout and it's already up to 46. So I will update and give these levels to clients. RFP, same thing. This is up 250%. This was written on Monday. And I'm like, careful, right? We're already here. Like, don't be greedy. This is already 250% on stock basis. Careful, careful. So I will update the key trends that I see, new trend ideas, like I happen to like this one and I give my reason for it. Um, safety plays, you know, bullish copper, how's it doing, new ideas. So I'm posting here in addition to my market thoughts, which you have access to as part of this product. And here, for example, the other day, this was actually um, what I would have, I was asked to be on Bloomberg, but I got, uh, I got bumped. <laughs> this was actually my trade setup. VIX already heavily promoted, but this July week four, 25 by 40 call spread. Uh, SPY currently at 4170, could easily see 150 point pullback. Here's what I would suggest for an option tactic, um, that particular put spread, especially after VIX is you know, up after seven consecutive weekly de declines. So this is what I'm overviewing, if you will, as well as some plays that I think are very, very important to sentiment in the market. SPACs are down 78.6%. Maybe we have a bounce. Well, we did this morning. EV, cannabis, XBI, still down 25%. So I'm updating market thoughts. I'm updating um, the trend ideas. I have macro to micro support channel, which is also accessible for trend traders. For example, my favorite oil trader comes in and says, careful, oil demand is not, you know, it's still warned oil demand not being what most are expecting it to be. So in other words, weakness in the oil patch. And then I have my intermarket tells. So this is the, the reference I made at the beginning when I see volatility come in, it's because of something no one else can see necessarily. But here is NYS, this NYSC chart. This is my intermarket analysis read. This was January 2018 when I called the short and we dropped 10% in two weeks. This was October 3rd when we dropped, it was 3.2% on the 10 year. We dropped 20% between October and December 23rd, October 3rd and December 23rd. This was the COVID, okay, where we dropped 35%. I don't know what this is gonna be, but 
we're really coiled in this particular indicator. So that's one, and we're very coiled in my stock bond volatility ratio, meaning we've got a few more weeks, but I think that's gonna intonate a surprise. So if you wanna know when and how I'm gonna trade it, become a member, especially if you are inter interested in this Trend Idea product. It is heavily discounted and it's accessible because it's six months. And you get the best of my Trend Ideas, you get access to those Slack channels that I just mentioned to you. You also get access to my Portfolio Hedger Risk Indicator and all of my macro to micro research. Normally $22.95 a year. That's $2,295 a year, and it's only $8.99 for six months to Wealth 365 attendees. So if you stuck with me during this presentation and you see this offer, it interests you, sign up. And you've got really just a lot of value. <laughs> I, am, I am very focused on market um, volatility, inflection, durable trades, setups, engagement. I don't know, how can you, get, how can you go wrong? This is just a really good deal. <laughs> so I'm not sure um, in regards to questions, the uh, enlarge the slide screens, which ones in particular, but um, it's too late now. <laughs> I didn't see it. But uh, you can, you know, hit me up. I can send you the presentation. Um, how's that? All right, so let's see. What questions are kind of burning? I've already given also um, a free live trading room prize for those who, uh, who came in. Um, thank you very much. Yes, I, I definitely want more women um, in this business. We're flexible in our mindset. We're risk aware. Thank you for those comments about women being, you know, really great traders and learning a lot from them. I'm a mom. I really care. Like this matters to me. I want I want my clients to be smart and protected. And I mean, they make their own, you know, success and failure. But I definitely want to help my children. I want to help, you know, my clients. Um, uh, this is this is what I really want to deliver. Is this kind of capturing, if you will, of how best to do this, how, how, when risk is coming in, what is safe and what isn't. So let's see, I will go through anything up here. Yeah, I go through crypto, but not crypto. So I think 96% of the, the crypto coins are really just junk, but I am very focused on um, Ethereum and Bitcoin. And of course, if something comes up like, you know, Dogecoin, in fact, Friday was up so much, I said, like, forget it. Just that that is a parabola and it equals trapped long. So I am not a rabid fan of any stock or asset class. I really believe that the Bitcoin trades like a commodity. If that turns you off, I understand, but I'm really one who has, who has to focus on this rotation always and I see risk in Bitcoin um, so it's not it's not my my total focus I will look at it and trade it but I'm not going to be married to it so the GME uh, recommendation was I, I actually outline it go to my YouTube channel look at my my GameStop I really dig in and explain why I was involved in that from June and stuck with it until 240. So literally, four to 40 went from four to 240. And yes, it went up to 500, but whatever. <laughs> whatever. Um, let's see, risk management is a superpower, indeed. I do not have a view on Mexican peso, you're funny. <laughs> I am curious, how do I do this without a research staff? Seriously, I am curious. I, I really, I just, I want to ask questions. I want to understand. I will go, when I started this gig, I actually went to mentors. I found mentors that were uh, subject matter experts, uh, whether they manage money, whether they were totally focused on money management. And I wanted to go and learn from them. So I literally, before, you know, Zoom, I said, can I just, can I shadow you for a few days? Literally, I would go anywhere in the country and shadow for a few days, watch what they did, took away, you know, bits and pieces, and then I created my own thing. And, but it, it made me realize that there are lots of ways to make money. The trick is not to lose it. So I think you have um, posted this access, what do you call it? Oh, because the, the 
the offer does not include the live trading room access. Um, per, this particular offer does not. So in, in other words, this pricing, right, is 300, it's 350 a month versus 3,700 for the live, which includes the live trading room. The big idea is I only do annually. This is a special offer. This is, that's the only way to say it. It does not include the live trading room and, um, you know, maybe another time. Maybe, maybe I'll do something promotional for Wealth 365 another time. Um, so yeah, so the education is, I will provide the slides, it's perfectly fine. You can definitely hit, hit me up, um, support at LaDukeTrading.com, I guess that'd be way, way to get it. So I am personally not teaching options. Nope, um, I have, yeah, we're already five o'clock. I, I am I am personally one that sets up an option trade for clients live and in my Slack channels, but I'm not teaching options. I'm busy analyzing. That's my that's my core strength. All right, Samantha, I'm gonna get you wrapped up. Do you have any closing thoughts? No, I'm appreciative of this opportunity and I hope everyone has a great rest of the trading week. Be safe out there. And yes, the uh, indicators go live on the Apple Store April 27th. Fingers and toes crossed. It's my first ever. 